It's the Daily 304's presentation on famous people, places, and events that shaped West Virginia. Welcome to the History Project. To date, we take a look at Stone and Thomas and the department stores. For those who remember the glory days of the American department store, online shopping holds no joy. Those beacons of downtown commerce have disappeared from all but a few major cities, as is also the case in the Mountain State. West Virginia had its share of J.C. Penney's, Sears, and Montgomery Wards, but nothing could beat the flair of locally owned stores, and each town had its favorite. In Grafton, Jolliffe's brought locals joy. In Morgantown, Acme was its high point. Parkersburg delighted in Dills. Fairmont was good to Goodman's. Clarksburg stores, Watts Lambert and Parsons Souders were as interesting on the outside as in. In Huntington, Anderson Newcomb had everything new, while in Charleston, the diamond was the city's gem. In Wheeling, though, residents loved stores with the name George, George M. Snook Company, George E. Stifle and Company, and George R. Taylor Company. But all the Georges existed in the shadow of Stone and Thomas. Jacob C. Thomas and Elijah J. Stone opened their original store on Wheeling's Market Street in 1847. It remained family owned for five generations. After World War II, the family expanded around the state, taking over some of those other venerable stores while opening new ones. At its zenith, Stone and Thomas owned 21 stores in four states and employed over 2,000 people. Ah, but sadly, it became a victim of the retail apocalypse. In 1998, it was sold to the Elder Beerman chain of Dayton, Ohio, and even that chain could not survive the damage done by online shopping. Today, Stone & Thomas is but a name on pieces of real estate, but its place in history is cemented as the place where West Virginians loved to shop.